So Billingham, you're celebrating your 50th anniversary. Ros and Martin Billingham, can you tell us about how you got to this point, how you started, how you came up, how you started making bags? Well, I was doing, I met Martin through photography. I was working at a camera shop and photo studio, doing wedding photography, darkroom work, which I really loved, being in the darkroom. Um, and Martin was an amateur photographer at a cam local camera club and he used to bring in his prints that he used to develop himself and print and he used to bring his 26 scenes to have mounted in the studio. So that's how we got together first. Okay. Um, so it's sort of like a continual circle really because we just ended up in photography together. Yeah. So you were a photographer though, yeah. so how did you go from being a photographer to a bag maker? Well, what happened was we, we sort of um, got to, I'd known Ros since she was 16, but we finished up, um, I was 24 when I got married to Ros, and we bought a house and got married. you very quickly realised that you don't have a lot of money, so we decided that the jobs that we got weren't good enough, so we thought we'd start a business. And we sat down one night and we looked at starting, I thought we'd become photographers basically, but Ross said, I, I don't fancy taking, we'll finish up taking wedding photographs and I don't fancy that, which is, mm. which is fair enough. So we decided then that we'd try and make bags because I worked at a company that made canvas and leather fishing bags. Um, and I thought perhaps uh, I'd left the company and they were always never making enough bags. So I thought perhaps I'd, I'd start making bags and, and I could make bags for them. But they weren't interested in that. But we thought making bags was a, a reasonable idea. Mm. Um, so that's how it started. And then we registered the company in 1973. Um, we borrowed some money from... We'd Ros already borrowed some money. Rosalind's aunt, yeah bought a sewing machine and we were, it took some time to get the materials together and get the canvas that we wanted and all the leather bits and brass and things. There's so, so many different materials yeah. in the bag. If you look at, you know, it might be 40 or 50 different items. So getting those all together took months and months and years, in fact. Mm. Um, but then we got it all together. And we started making bags, uh, making at home. at home. We had a cutting table. First in the garage, didn't we? And then in a the bedroom. Yep. And I used to cut all the, all the pieces of the canvas that were cut out with a big pair of shears. Mm. Um, and all the leather was cut out with a round leather knife. And I used to do all the cutting and all the preparation of the leather. And Martin used to sew the bags together. I was, so, I was the same machinist. You were the same machinist, okay. Yeah. I yeah. can't sew. Okay. I can't use the same machine. Yeah. But these were for the fishing industry. Yes. This was entirely for the fishing yeah. industry. And, and then the idea was at some stage, because we were working part time, um, and um, to, to raise more money and to give more time in the day, I, I took a job, a shift working job in a chemical factory, which was, which was great, really nice people, really enjoyed it. Um, and we did lots of things to, to keep it going. And eventually in 1977, we got an order from a, a, a large fishing company. They make rods and things, Harley Brothers in uh, Annick. Uh, and they placed an order for 300 bags, which was a lot of bags. So we thought we'd, we'd go full time. So I went full time. Ros was still at home looking after you the- You got, yeah, that's when we had the first little yeah. unit. Yeah. So I, we had a 500 square feet lean-to basically mm -hmm. and I used to go there at 7 o'clock in the morning and come back at 7 o'clock at night, have Fridays off. Um, and Friday afternoons. That's the, and we just carried on selling bags and that was great. Um, and then we made a lot of bags for an American customer and he was selling, we found out he was selling our bags in New York as camera bags. A lot of photographers were buying them. Um, so we looked and thought... It just fell into place, yeah. didn't it? Bags, camera bags, We said, oh, crikey, let's get back into photography. So and that's what we did. That was, it was our yeah. thing yeah. that kept us, wasn't yeah. it? Got us together and... Yeah. yeah. And then we did... We heard about a, a, a photography show in London, in Earl's Court, I think it was, in 1980. 
I think it was around about 1980. And we, we, we by that time, we were making the, the what was the System 1 at that time. Mm. Um, and we took that and the System 2 to this um, photography show. And it went fantastically well. It was really, really good. And we met uh, Donovan, David Bailey, and Don McCullin, and lots of very, very interesting people. Mm. And it went, it was great, really nice. It was the first time though, because we'd taken the bags into camera shops. And at the time, all the camera bags were hard boxes. And they said, nobody's going to buy a soft bag and put a camera in it. That's inc you know, it's so incredible now that people, they yes. thought there was no market for a soft camera bag. Yeah. That's right. Yes, and we couldn't. There wasn't would, one yeah. shop that would take one wow. and try it. And you tried a few, obviously. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes, we travelled all down to London, Midlands, yes. up no, north a little bit. And we'd also started, we'd also, before we went to the exhibition, we'd started selling the mail order. And so we knew there was a market there because people were um, buying them from us directly. Mm. And a, a lovely guy called um, uh, Donald, uh, Kevin, Mac Kevin McDonald mm. wrote an article in Practical Photography. Mm. Sorry, it was Practical Photography, but he wrote a lovely article about our bags. Um, and that was really helpful, and that, that helped with yeah. the mail order. So we knew we got a market. Mm. Um, yeah, so that was, that was pretty good. So how did you arrive at the first, the design for the first bag? Obviously, as photographers, you must have had some idea of what photographers would want in a bag. Yes, because we always had cameras between us and different equipment and that. And Martin would wake up and have a notepad and a pencil at the side of the bed and he'd wake up, he'd sit up and he'd start drawing things and, and that's what you did, wasn't it? Yes. And, and that, that's yeah. and how we arrived there. The cameras, obviously the cameras and lenses going back to the um, 80s, early 80s were quite, they were quite big big things so I thought well, professionals would need a big bag and so we made a big bag and that was always the market the pro market yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and my father looked at it and says that's far too big nobody would want a big bag like that that's ridiculous <laughs> because he he didn't know how big he the wasn't cameras a photographer. Were. <laughs> <laughs> I did wonder yeah. but yeah so yeah that's basically a little bit of luck there mm. so what was the um, hard work Bailey and Litchfield and Donovan's reaction to the bags, did they like them? They did, didn't they? Very much so. Yeah, they were tools, weren't yeah. they? they you know, can we, uh, and we had a, an absolutely abysmal um, divider system. It was absolutely awful. Um, it, was just, it was just so bad, but people just came in and they got the professionals with, they didn't worry whether they clunked together because mm -hmm. they weren't paying for the, they, oh, that's fine, that's great. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> but they had dividers. It didn't have dividers, but it wasn't very good. No. It was called the System Flex, and it was plywood and foam. And, uh, and I could only get white foam, so I, I sold it as an available light interior. <laughs> That's a good clever, Sorry. Clever. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell us about the, the story, the anecdote I told about the, the bet that they had about the to win a bag. So maybe you can tell us that uh, anecdote. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I can't remember, I think it was... It was Lord Litchfield. L Litchfield and Bailey, and, and one of them bet the other they couldn't do... I think it was Bailey bet Litchfield that he couldn't do so many press-ups, and Litchfield went away and he did the press-ups, and the prize for the was a five, was the System 1 bag. But so obviously he, come to you and say, would you give us a bag if he can do the <laughs> press-ups? <laughs> no, 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 he actually bought it. He actually bought it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. They came back the next day, didn't they, to get yeah. one and, yeah. yeah. Well. So did that? Did that having uh, Lord Litchfield having one of your bags must have helped? Yes. Yeah. It, it I was mean, a boost. Yeah. It was. And of course we had magical, really. Well, great we endorsement. Had, yeah. And of course, really, we had the market to ourselves. I, I remember we got invited to one of our one of our customers ran the techno shops, techno photographic shops, and he had a. A racing day at Silverstone because he had a, a, a car racing there mm. uh, and he invited me down and every single photographer had got a Billingham every single photographer got a Billingham bag and I thought this this is the height it'll never get any better than that because it doesn't last as it did mm. but at the time we had the market almost to ourselves no competitors no competitors right. there were there were but ten were around at the same time you know about the same time but and we, Jim Dobkin. We did, yeah, we did very well, yeah. 
And so this would have been, what, the mid-80s by this time? Yeah. yeah that was early, early 80s. Yeah, 83, yeah, early 80s. Yeah. And at this point, it was just the System 1 bag was the one? System 1, System 2, and I then we made a System 3, yeah. System 4. So we had... A, they one came tumbling after each yeah. other, didn't they? And yeah. they're what, they varied in size? Or? Yeah, it was just yeah. small again. Yeah, that was the largest one, and then they got smaller than that. So, and then from there, how has how is you how has it evolved from that range to the, the current range you have now? I think it was probably prompted by the cameras changing. So then we had to come up with new ideas for different shapes of cameras and a better interior, obviously, and different lenses and that. Do you do a lot of research into sort of, or is it just basically gut instinct and talking to people? I always it, it, it's yeah. reading magazines. It's keeping in touch with people and in touch with photographers and and very... people come to us with ideas, don't they? And they say, "I've got this equipment, and what bag?" And you think, "Oh, you can get it into a three three five, and you try it, and you know that they can't. So then you've got to." And we used to do, do a lots of bag. exhibitions, didn't we? Which, yeah. which was a really very, good very place good. to start. You have to be very do careful the, sometimes because if you if people talk about doing research and you have to be careful because if you if you ask people what they want you don't always get the right answers like you know if mm. it's like um apple if they yeah. said how would you fancy a, a phone with no buttons on it you know mm. nobody's going to buy it or want it are they no. so they have to build it and show them before they yeah use it. that's right yeah. yeah yeah and i guess in the original the early days they were khaki the original color yeah at what point did you introduce other colours and which colours were those? Oh, I suppose by the mid-80s. Black came next. Black came next, Black, yeah. yeah. And as I said, when I went to see Alan Jessup, he sort of... <laughs> it wasn't really happy. <laughs> Two lots of extra things to stock. And that so was why, because skews, they, were, they had to more stock... More skews, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Double yeah. the skews. And right. Because now there's even more, because you've got lots of, of colours. Yeah. 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 And a lot more different You'd be models. less happy now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you choose the colours for the bags? I think it really just what looks looks nice. Yeah, it's been most of it's been down to Harry, um, and he's got he's obviously got an eye for colours and detail and things like that. And he'll put he's put colours together, hasn't he? Mm. And he's very good at it, actually. Mm. Yeah. But occasionally we see a canvas, they'll send us a, a new swatch and we'll just look and say, that would look nice. Yeah. And they're all made here in this factory, but obviously this is a long way from the place you started. So what's your, it's, in terms of premises, how has that evolved? It's not very far away from where we started. Not, in, think, not geographically? House, geographically no, no, not far. It, it is a long way. From yeah. where we started, isn't it? Yeah. So you went and from this little got, 500 square foot. Yeah. Place. What was next? How the next work? was a 1,500 square feet new unit, uh, and that was on the basis of we started to sell camera bags, and so we took a plunge and we, uh, and we found a, a new unit in a place called Lye, which is quite close, and then we, then we started expanding and selling lots of bags from there. So then we moved into next door, which was four and a half thousand square feet, and then I think we rented the two. So the first one became the stores, and the second one became the the factory. And all the time this is happening, you're employing more people. So you're sort of looking after a lot more people as well as space and factory. It's not just a factory, it's, it's the people as well. And, mm. and then things and don't always go according to plan and you suddenly find that you're not selling as many bags as you thought you needed to sell and uh, then it becomes more difficult. And, uh, yeah. and so how long have you been in the current space? 12 years? 12 years this year, yeah. And you, how, how many people do you employ? There's 43 of us all together, including uh, the directors and the office staff. And some of them have been with you a long time, haven't they? So yeah. Caroline's been with us 38 years. Mark's been with us 30... Two, 33? 35, I think. Oh, 30, oh, okay. 30, into be. the 30s, anyway. Yeah. And then there's a lot, well, there's a few been with us 20 years, and then the majority are sort of in the middle, sort of 10, 9, 8 years. Yeah. That's a, that's a good endorsement as well as, as, as you as a couple of, as a business, not just the bags themselves, but as a company. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, they're, they're really lovely people. 
just good plain, bunch, yeah. straightforward, walk in, talk to anybody. And, you know, they're... and they really love making something, having a part of making something that ends up on the inspection table and it's mm -hmm. this beautiful product and they're really proud of it. And the fact that they know that they go all over the world and we've won your awards mm. and they were just so proud to be part of it, weren't mm. they? Yeah, uh, yeah. Mm. And the fact that they are largely handmade in a, in a world yeah. where not many things are these days, are they? And not many things at all are made in Britain, especially photographic accessories. That's true. Um, in, this, in our market, there's not much. And the fact that they are not only made here, but it's made in that sort of detail and, and love and care is... Uh, it's, it's all about detail. It's lovely. It's really nice to come in. It's still nice to walk in and see the process and see the manufacturing process. Mm. That's why we're still here, still yeah. working. Yes. It's quite exciting, really. And of course, what, to see them. Uh, and really what's happened is the first 40 years were really quite it was tough. The first 10 years were great. Uh, it came into the 90s and uh, because the Chinese were doing, started to export a lot, then we had difficulty in selling our bags and it was really difficult. Then we had to downsize and it was a real struggle. The 90s were a real struggle. Um, and gradually we get round to the, to the to stage where I'm about to retire and we get these premises and... Start getting busy and again. It's, it's now, because it, it runs really nicely, it's, it's much more pleasurable now. You know, mm. we have a little bit of money in the bank. We've you know, got lovely machines. Um, it's like a big shed. So I can come in and you know play around with things. It's mm. it's good fun. Make things. Yeah. And do you think there's a more of an appreciation now in the market among among the customer base, not just in photography but generally for for quality products and handmade products and that sort of attention to detail right away, rather than the mass production of so it's, many competitors. I, th I think some people always appreciate that, but there was a stage in the 90s when we'd go to exhibitions and somebody would say, well, why would I buy this for? Two hundred pounds when I can buy this for twenty pounds. I, mean, exa mm. I exaggerate, but mm. and I look and I, I can't tell you why. You know, there's, I haven't got a good reason. But, but you're right. I think people have more appreciation of something that's handmade and made in England still. And yeah, I think people are more aware of what's going on in the manufacturing sector, mm. and they go out and they look for things. They know what they want to buy, not just in the photographic trade or buying photographic mm. stuff, but they go out and buy clothes and they're looking, you know, at labels and what it's made from and things. And the quality as well, they can and the tell. quality, yeah. yeah. Now you could, how many different, I think you mentioned, how many different bits of materials are used in, in a typical bag? Um, I think in something like a Hadley, I think they're 50-ish, I think, 50 individual components in a, I think something like that. It's been a long time since I did a picking yeah, list. Yeah, we'll have mm. to. And those would be obviously brass, leather, you've got your canvas, you've got your bonded layer, and then you've got your inserts, which are... Yeah, and then yeah. All, all the bits of the, the press stuff and, and the zips and the zip phones, ends. Yeah. Uh, it, it adds up and you suddenly find. When we first had a, a bill of material, uh, I started to fill it in, and when it got to 10, it didn't work any more than that. And I phoned the people up and I said, this bill of material only goes up to 10. He said, well, well how can you need more than 10 items in a bag? And I started to reel them off. OK. <laughs> and the threads, of course, as well. Yeah. Different yeah, yeah. threads. Yeah. There's about three different types of threads, yeah. isn't there, in making yeah. a bag? Yeah. So where do you see the future for billing and bags? I'd like to think that it will continue for... Another, let's look forward another to 50. another 50 years, maybe. That would be great. We probably won't be here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, new designs, um, different canvases. Yeah. We've got good people. Martin's so. still designing things, okay. and Harry does some of the design. And also, I should point out that not only design the bags, but you design some of the machinery that makes the bags. Yes. That's the fun, that's the fun yeah. bit because um, it's it's all right. One of my one of my things is I enjoy making things, but I actually enjoy making the same thing over and over, lots and lots of things, mm. so that I sort of design systems where people can find it easy to make them, like the jigs and, mm. and things like that. Uh, and when you design panels, you have to make sure that you design them so they can't be reversed and make it, you know, things like that. So that's real fun. That's really good 
good fun and when people find it easy to make them or easier to make them then I'm doing a reasonable job then so mm. it's yeah it's nice and we have as a lady that works on ancillary and she really enjoys when I bring her a new product and she can sort of get into different length zips different lengths where a different product a, a bag product or a different yeah, bit of or a equipment different way of the... making something okay. you know a new, new type of handle um, and then Martin will go off and engineer a piece of equipment that they need to hold something or mm. screw something down or press something down. And, yeah, yeah. The, the handle on top of the Hadley, there's something like 10, 10 jigs to actually make yeah. that work, you know, right from the start. Um, and when I designed it, it took, me, it took me sort of six months to decide on the buying a hot cutter because when you the web that goes on the top is a hole cut in it to get the tube in mm. and if you just chop a hole in with a, something sharp the thread the uh, web just disintegrates so you need a hot cutter to, to cut a hole in it and the hot cutter was very expensive so I took a long time to decide to to buy the it works yeah. fine now mm. is there a trend you can identify in, in in sort of bags the bag world I guess they're getting smaller maybe because cameras are getting smaller they are going a little bit smaller now yeah and Martin's working on a backpack, a couple of backpack designs, mm. so... And I guess people now have laptops and tablets and things. Yes. And yeah, so it gets yeah. bigger again, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, I think the thing is, uh, the interesting thing is that people always seem to need bags, don't they? If you get on the train, everybody is carrying... Every, not everybody, everybody's carrying a bag. Yeah. You know, lots and lots of people carry bags. Um, and there isn't a perfect one. So we have to keep making lots of different ones. Yeah. There is not a perfect uh, there are bag. Two, two types of bag, too big or too small. Yeah. Well, thank you. This has thank been you. amazing, <laughs> amazing to see. Amazing thank to you. have a global tour of I, the factory. It is so lovely to have you all here. Uh, thank you, thank you. Lovely it's been to great. learn about how the bags are made. Yeah. So.